A lifelong champion of equal rights for women and the lesbian and gay community, Anne Stanback has fought for social justice and challenged the status quo with courage, conviction, and a soft Southern style, earning her the nickname Connecticut Steel Magnolia. Born in Salisbury, North Carolina on December 15, 1958, into an upper middle class family, Anne was raised in a religious community, wrestling with issues of discrimination and racism. We grew up going to a very liberal Methodist church um, that was involved in social justice issues and I think that um, it had an important influence on the direction of my life. From an early age, Anne excelled in both academics and athletics and was actively involved in community service, winning multiple awards for her commitment to others. Her parents, Betty Ann and William Stanback, had a deep sense of civic responsibility that fostered Anne's innate social conscience. My parents' activism had a huge impact on how I uh, understood my place in the world um, and how I understood social justice issues. Although the loss of her mother at 17 left a void in Anne's life, Betty Stanback left behind a legacy of leadership and social advocacy for Anne to follow. When Anne graduated from Davidson College in 1981, she was presented with the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Service Award. Davidson's highest honor bestowed upon a member of the graduating class. Anne ultimately chose to venture north to further her education at Yale Divinity School in 1982. Anne went to Yale Divinity School in order to um, kind of deepen her spiritual uh, understanding of, of her call to justice, which she always felt deep in her own bones. It was during her years at Yale that Anne met Charlotte Kinlock, her partner of 23 years. Charlotte has shared celebrations and setbacks with Anne and has been a supportive and motivating force in Anne's life. They're a very strong support system for each other um, in terms of the common values and accomplishing the common goals. Charlotte encouraged Anne to not only come out amongst her friends, but to openly work to challenge the boundaries of equality for the lesbian and gay community. I needed to be out, I needed to be proud, and I needed to be political. One of Anne's first forays into the political arena came as she co-chaired the original Connecticut Coalition for Lesbian and Gay Rights. Many people thought back then that in fact, equal rights had already been extended to gays and lesbians, and, and so part of the effort was to let people know that that wasn't true. People could be fired from their job, they could be denied service in a restaurant, they could be uh, denied credit or housing simply because of their sexual orientation. And in the same way that it just seemed patently wrong to me that black children and white children couldn't go to school together or that girls uh, shouldn't be allowed to play sports. Um, it, it was patently unfair that um, someone who was qualified um, should be denied a job or fired from a job simply because of who they loved. Anne helped lead the charge to pass the Connecticut Gay Rights Bill in 1991, which made it illegal to discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation. That same year, Anne became the executive director of NARAL Pro-Choice Connecticut, substantially expanding the organization's efforts to address a wider variety of reproductive health care issues. Equality for all people uh, involves having choices. If women were going to be truly equal in the, this society, they needed to be able to control their bodies. In 1994, Anne took over leadership of the Connecticut Women's Education and Legal Fund. As executive director, Anne brought a whole new level of success to Quelf's effectiveness in guaranteeing women's voices be heard throughout the legal system and in matters of public policy. When it was learned that the planned Avon Health Center intended to discriminate against women and limit health care services based on religious doctrine, Anne served as the spokesperson for a coalition of 13 women's organizations that fought to block state funding for the center. During her tenure at Guelph, Anne also made equal opportunity for women in sports a top priority as she became a guardian for Title IX. There were teams for girls, um, but um, the boys always got the better playing times, um, the, better, the better practice times, the better fields, the better tennis courts. Looking back, Anne traces her feminist awakening and personal understanding of discrimination in athletics 
to junior high school. When I tried to get onto the team, I was told that girls had no place on a boys tennis team and that there wasn't a team for girls. And that was really the first time I felt discriminated against myself. This event was instrumental in the formation of Anne's simple but profound philosophy which has guided her throughout her life. If we can just um, educate people about the discrimination and the injustices that exist in society, eventually people will understand and not only laws will change, but attitudes will change. Anne has a, an extraordinarily capacious vision of inclusion and equality. She's obviously deeply committed to women. She's deeply committed to uh, same-sex couples and their kids, and deeply committed to the people of Connecticut and the idea of a community. In 1999, Anne helped create Love Makes a Family, an organization dedicated to equality for same-sex couples and their families. In its first two years, with Anne at the helm, LMF affected two important pieces of legislation. One gave same-sex couples the right to legally adopt their own children, and the other guaranteed domestic partnership benefits for state employees in same-gender relationships. I don't think that Anne Stanback decided that she was going to be the leader or that she was going to be at the forefront of the choice movement or the women's movement or the marriage equality movement. I think we chose Anne. In 2005, due in large part to Anne's extraordinary leadership abilities, LMF was the primary force behind Connecticut, becoming the first state in the nation to voluntarily pass legislation allowing same-sex couples to enter into civil unions. As a firm believer that civil union is not full equality under the law, LMF is currently focused on securing the right for same-sex couples to marry. I know that the civil union statute would not have passed without LMF's work, uh, Love Makes a Family, and I don't think it would have happened without Anne. Anne has touched lots of lives who don't have any idea probably that she was the person behind all this work, but it's been her dedication and commitment to those issues that's made sure that other people could benefit from them.